Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. I'm Adam Steele, this is Hot Pole Studios and hope you're all doing well. It's been a while since I've done a live stream, but now I am here and I'm ready and I have some new toys to play with. I've got my keyboard which is now hooked in via this wonderful little ESI hub thing. Uh, so that's making all the world go around here. I I've got the voice thing which my headphones are turned down a little, I'm going to need more level. There we go. And so that's using this ART thing with the Lewit 940 Authentica, which is completely overkill as a voiceover mic. Uh, but tonight we're going to try something that's a little bit of fun. And I'm going to try just writing a whole new piece. And the inspiration is two things. Firstly, I just got this bass which is beautiful, but the thing you can't see on camera yet, and I'm purposefully hiding it, is the crazy thing. Yeah, that's right. This has a whammy bar. This this is, uh, yeah, absolutely not so. Having a, a, a bar like this, which I need to kind of sort the tension out a little, but that is bananas. And the other thing is this, which is... I have started doing a little bit of stuff with Get Good Drums, and this is the One Kit Wonder Dry and Funky. And this was recorded, produced, mixed by uh, Pete at Middle Farm Studios, where I was not very long ago. And it sounds... Dry. And very funky. And of course it's got... Shaky, shaky, chick, chick stuff. And yes, the one kit wonder should mean that all being well, uh, I have very, very little mixing to do. I'm going to take this down by a few dB, including the reverb, because I don't want this anywhere near clipping. And that's very, very uh, close to it. So I'm going to turn up my headphones a little more. You might need to do the same. And that's it. And the only thing I've changed in the settings is I changed the drum mapping to be the, the classic general MIDI mapping, which I know and have used forever and ever. Which means if I put this bass down, I can do this. Ooh, actually, yeah, I can slide this over. So uh, I can smash the uh, smash the stream deck with it. But what I actually meant to do was this. There it is. Yeah, that's got the buttons. So, between that... Oh, I need to lock that down because this is a heavy, heavy microphone. There we go. Uh, heavy microphone for this stand, anyway. Uh, that is... All the way down there. So what I might need to do is find where the octave... Is there an octave thing? Oh yeah, so I can transpose the keyboard. I think I can transpose the keyboard. 24. Was I supposed to transpose minus 24? Yeah, there we go. That's just brought everything up by two octaves. So I'm not stretching like a crazy person. Although I might just program this from uh, from the key bed. Who knows? First thing we're going to need is some sort of uh, tempo. So, oh, MIDI file generated by contact. No, I don't need that. <laughs> What I do need, I'll just call this drums, because it's a one kit wonder, so in theory, it doesn't need any mixing at all. So I'm going to have this from Analog One, which I have one of the Simple Way DI boxes plugged in. That works. <laughs> Let's 
get some raw DI bass tone. Ah, oh, gotta love that sound. That's not as loud as I was expecting, huh? Yeah, one of these pickups has been wired backwards. Get a bit more gain on it. This has been wired out of phase. So I'm going to have to dig in and do that at some point, not right this minute, because that's going to need a soldering iron. In the meantime, though, let's. How's that sound? Good? I mean, that's also got my uh, um, microphone sound on, so let's just turn that off for a minute. The fact that I can do that is hilarious. Uh, so let's get uh, an amp on there. Let's use something from our friends over at IK Multimedia with Amplitube. Because why not? Their SVT Ampeg stuff has always been a winner. Ooh, that sounds like a guitar amp. Just get a little bit of my, uh, ooh, uh, JD and Lemonade. So let's switch this out for Collections, is it custom shop? SVX, let's go with SVT Classic, clean. That seems strangely quiet. Why? Why on earth would that be so? Is this got volumes dipped down somewhere or something? Because that's coming in pretty hot. We can see on the meters there. Uh, hmm. Let's unmute the DI. Take that down a bit. Don't want too much room on this, so let's turn up the gain. Oh, there we go. Yeah, maybe the pickup isn't wired backwards. I mean, they are completely different pickups, but yeah, it's one of those things that obviously got missed. And when you say the builder, there is no builder for this. This is a custom instrument that I've had put together by the guys, well, the guys I usually use. 
but that's the neck pickup and let's go for the bridge incoming text from Glenn perfect yes lovely yeah, that, that's the big rig pickup that I've got at the back. Uh, let's get it tuned. That might help. Um, tuner. Power. Oh, and it's almost spot on. How about that? Um, I spent a good while a uh, couple of days ago uh, really fine tuning the bridge on this because it's it's like tuning a Floyd Rose. It's a huge pain. Because uh, as you pull each string around, it pulls all the other strings around. The, uh, the pickups are definitely uh, flat and even, so they're, they're not skewed. But yeah, I need to do this a few times just to get everything just about right, because like I say, the more I change the tuning, the more it pulls the tuning. There we go. Tune off. Yeah, DI is already down 16 dB. It doesn't need to go any lower than that. What you're hearing is through the microphone. If I turn the mic off. There we go, now you can hear me again. So yeah, I just changed it so that there's less bass bump on the bass's EQ itself. And just... Uh, it can't sound like one of the pickups is not in phase right now, Danny, because this... Oh yeah, oh, unless you mean in general. Because right now it's only using the bridge pickup. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah, but yeah. Um, the, one of the pickups is uh, not right, but they are both single coil pickups, so the pickup itself can't be out of phase with itself. Um, so that that's not it. They're just... If I put them in together... And then neck only. Bridge, bridge only. Uh, usually I would go with neck only as my kind of tone. But uh, that's more of a rocky kind of thing because that lends itself well to being distorted and not having that honking mid thing. But uh, we're going for a funkier kind of track tonight. So uh, I definitely want the bridge pickup. So yeah, what you're hearing as kind of the the out of phasey and clattery high end thing is actually the fact that there's a, a microphone 18 inches away from the bass. As soon as I do this, Suddenly it sounds a lot better, and of course this is a completely uncompressed tone as well. So what I'm going to do now is bring some le -le 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 level in with good old Slate Virtual Mix Rack. And start off with the LA-2A, where are you? 
LE2E. Yeah, let's bring a little bit more gain in so we're closer to the 30 mark. Let's move my hand further back. It's funny, people know me mostly as a kind of a, a rock and metal guy, but I do this as well. So um, I'm going to get a little bit of custom EQ. So I'm going to add a bit of bigness after the compressor so I can take a little bit more low end away on the bass itself so it's not making the compressor pump quite so much. Andre says you're a ducker on your vocal mic. You know what? That's really not a bad idea. Uh, hold on just a second while I sort that out because I've been doing that for Brown for years. Why have I not done that for myself? Do Reaper input. Threshold 10 to 1, threshold low. Right, um, hold on tight. Let's see if this works. And you can still hear me. Oh my word, why have I not done that? I know why I've not done that. I had to start OBS again from scratch on here a while back. But thank you for the shout, Andre. That is... Uh, Reminded me to do that. That's been uh, long overdue. So yes, I am using OBS to stream. And uh, yeah, I'm using the Restream plugin in Reaper to send the sound through. And that's being used like a filter uh, in OBS. But it's it was set up at one point and I forgot to change it. So yeah bit more bigness what I can do from here by the sounds of it is get a bit more drive in amplitude not full-on distortion Maybe a little less bass in there. But what I'm going to try and get is pulling some of these harmonics out of them. That's more like it. And let's just make sure the LE2A is not going bananas. <laughs> It is kind of going a little crazy. The, this, there's a slider for room that's probably too high. Yeah, way too high. I mean, that sounds like kind of it right there. There's uh Oh, oh no, 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 no. There we go. Now, 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 now. <laughs> Somewhere there should be an option for an input gate. Uh, let's go back to the cab view. And maybe bring in a little bit of this mic. <laughs> That's sounding pretty good to me. Let's try the uh, different 8 by 10 I mean, that's hitting the output of a Reaper too hot, so I need to turn up my headphones. Um, I made a tutorial for, for using Restream a while back, but it doesn't work for everybody. It only works on Windows. And it, there are other ways of doing it too. This is just one of the, the ways that I found that works reliably and repeatably. But yeah. So 
So I think somewhere along the line here, I need a gate type pedal dynamics. Noise gate. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah, this is going to be a uh, volume down. Thank you very much. Yeah, the, the vocals are going to pump a little bit. I mean, that's the price you pay, unfortunately, for having automated systems like that because it doesn't know second to second what I want to do. And, well, because I've got my microphone on zero latency monitoring, so I don't get uh, head scrambled. Um, It's a fine line. Now, uh, let's get just... See if there's a simple funky groove in here. Um, different song. down it's flipping everything all I want just to play along to is a simple but that but that but that but that I'll program it myself um so see you Work. Bum de bum de. Make sure snap is on, otherwise it'll be loose as all heck. Bum dick dick. There we go. That will do. This is not the final drum, by the way. This is just me have something to play to that isn't just a. I'm on the wrong one. Yeah, that I mean this was recorded as far as I know in the smaller room at Middle Farm. Last Christmas I no. <laughs> Cool, but too fast. Um, let's try 110, not 960, 110. There we go, let's try that. Mm -hmm. 
Let's take the speed down a little more, 106. hands are a little bit out of shape they're kind of square when they should be round no. um, let's take this off before I sweat to death and whoa my arms go to the gym they said though. they'll make you fit they said <laughs> screw what they said Trying to trying to get this uh majuja the uh whammy arm to stay in place and not drop is trickier than it looks. I think there might be a small setup setting thing somewhere for that. But I think we found our speed. Now to try and uh I'll turn record off on the drums. Get that down there so people can see it best thing about the one kit wonder stuff is that sound is pretty much ready <laughs> i'll just play that funky music <laughs> Rock and roll band. Yeah. <laughs> so it's got a bit more realism to it. Let's add some more mid range back in. <laughs> Seem that this cabinet does not have very much high end. <laughs> microphone could that be replaced with that's got more of a an era appropriate sound let's try that Huh. 
<laughs> a delay between me and the video. Yeah, I'm going to bring the, the room mics in a little as well because I'm at 100% that. It's a little weird. Let's see what the C112 sounds like. Might be a bit overkill. Four twenty one, it's not very uh, funk appropriate though, four twenty one. That seems to do the job. Let's bring it in a little so it's brighter. There, wibble wobble, wibble wobble. Check the tuning. No, so I don't have. There is a mute button, so I don't have to deafen you all. That's good. How's everyone doing this evening? Anybody got got a drink? Joining me with my JD and lemonade. careful not to pull on the strings while I do any of this as well because of the trem arm. The trem's a real kind of pain on this, but it's fun. So hey. Right, let's try some more bass lines with the record on. It's Christmas. Right. That might have been a line right there. Hmm, maybe. I think that might be our lead line. The the yeah, that bow down. Thank you. 
a little bass solo over the top at some point. Ah, yes. Tasty drinks. But yeah, that. <laughs> Yeah, that 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 seems to be our. Uh, am I going to be adding lyrics? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I should probably save this at some point very soon. Uh, let's turn the volume down on that and put it in my. I need to make a twenty twenty two folder. On key, dry, nurse, and copy all the media. Get a guitar and think James Brown. Well, I will be getting a guitar at some point soon. But... Uh, last Christmas, try my. I think this might call. I mean, that was all a little bit rough. It'll either need editing or re-recording, but this might call for an octaver. Pedal. Not fuzz modulation. No. Pitch. SVX oct. This is going to need to be down by a lot. Nope, that don't work. Go on, off you go, off you pop. Ooh, let's try a little bit of the Boss OC2. to take snap off and really edit this down so it actually sounds like I can play because terrible secret I can't at least not perfectly on command Let's zoom this in but yeah. really like that Oh, inspiration has struck. Oh, yes. Um, 
yeah, so we need a, a kind of a... I'm going to keep that, but... <laughs> Yeah, the, the B string clattering around is really not helping. Let's let's try a pick just for a minute. Yeah, now that the the main bass line sounds much better without that, but that's going to be kept. Turn that gain down. Yeah. Right, so let's get this going. that down for a second before somebody catches fire and place that in this corner right there oh boy so hey right uh, yeah kind of got some inspiration there so Did I somehow accidentally chord that? Okay, we have a start. Just make sure I get rid of all the rest of it. Move all of this to the start of the bar. See, we've already got a shake and a groove. Oh, pressure's on. I'm suddenly a little warm. Yeah, 
But now I've got three sections. I've got the uh, kind of main one. I've got um, B section and I've got so yeah good start A B A reprise This is probably not going to turn into an entire full song at this point, but this is a very good start. So, uh, what I probably want is to turn on Le Metronome and just move away those drums. And I'm going to do a thing that I used to do when I was younger. I'm not talented enough with the keyboard to play the entire drum part like someone like Mike Mallion can in one go but what I can do is groove the drum and bass and then over the top of it go do that ba bam ba bam kind of thing so let's let's try and overlay that and a one and a two and three and four and Let's, oh, my arms are aching. Right, where I can now right click on the record of the drums and change it to MIDI overdub. Record MIDI overdub. And now on the same MIDI part where I just absolutely ham fisted that, and I'll change that to be diamond so I can see them. Where that was absolutely ham fisted and there were some blurks all over the place. Hopefully I can kind of rescue that and we'll see very shortly. Uh, this is definitely a right hand job for me because... Uh, yeah, there we go. And uh, one, and uh, two. That was terrible. Uh, let's scrap it and do the whole thing again. Uh, right, here we go. And one, and two, and three, and four.
Still not good. Still not great, but let's just see. I mean, the sounds are great. My playing is terrible. Let's try uh, some kind of. Uh, swing and just try the quantize to the eighth swing. Not 100% quantize, just a little. And let's just see. Let's go back to quantize swings, or is it dots? That one. That's more like it, even though my programming sucks. So I'm going to put 16th swing, uh, 23% or 25%-ish on the snappity snap. And I'm going to go in and edit this. But yeah, um, any instrument, any recommendation for virtual instrument plugins? While I appear to be using GGD Dry and Funky, so I'm going to recommend that. Uh, but beyond that, I don't use very many, honestly. Archoria stuff is always incredible if you want vintage synths. And I love vintage synths, so I go with that a lot. It's supposed to be there. Death, but there. I am using Amplitude, which is not a virtual instrument, though. That's what he was asking was virtual instrument plugins. Amplitude is not a virtual instrument plugin. That is an amplifier, uh, virtual amp. Very different things. Uh, I do have a bass amp. I have several bass amps. Uh, the landmark that is usually there is at the studio currently. So I'm using what I've got. And also the landmark doesn't do this sound. It doesn't do funky really.
too hard. So let's bring that down. So what I'm going to use for the guitar tone. Well, all I've got with me guitar wise right now is either the Ibanez Geo or the PRS Tremonti. So I'm probably going to use the neck pickup on the Tremonti and go super dry. <laughs> dry and funky kit no you don't need well you need contact player to use it contact player is free uh, i happen to have the full version of contact so i'm using it in there but no you don't need to buy contact i think one kit wonder is 39 dollars, and that's it you don't need to pay for anything else rush crashes uh, I always push the beat too hard okay so let's play that back it's probably not amazing it's not going to set the world on fire but there's oh on either the B section or the A reprise I could use a little bit of that too So the bass isn't incredible, but it'll do for now. Because uh, I'm thinking of a bass solo on top. Uh, let's get guitars. And then... Oh. Guitar left. Which I'm going to record uh, just down the centre for now. And... That story about everybody, that's what happens when you touch your uh, jack to the whammy bar. Uh, let's put that down a sec. That's the sound of static, which is not a Simon and Garfunkel song. Uh, let's pull this one out of its case. Let's get the get the beast out and kind of close to in tune. Sorry, this that is a proper one on that. That's that's the simple way. Di being too good. Um. 
start with a tuner and get this strings so that should Ladies and gentlemen, the Tremonti. Right. I'm going to do the classic thing here. I'm going to try it at least of using just a Neve style um, a Neve style preamp and just driving it a little bit how do you make the sound wave so colourful? change it to spectral peaks in the options Do I have a single coil setting on this guitar? I do not. Might be time to get old Rusty out, the Geo, which is uh, going to be interesting. This is actually my wife's guitar. And it cost almost nothing. Let's just get it roughly in tune first and hope. tuned in a while. Trick to tuning trems is be be quick and be ruthless and do it over and over and over until it gives in. Close enough. Clean gain, of course, so, uh, yeah, output trim. There we go, no guitar amp needed. Doing it like some of the old funk guys used to do. Back to mums, back down to 80. 
sí. Sounds good. Now let's see if we can get that to fit. Where's that metronome? And a two, and a three, and a four. nowhere near what it was supposed to be yeah Chris says it reminds him of Corey Wong well Corey Wong does this Tuning's all over the show. But... How long have I been arranging songs? Uh, on and off for about 20 years. And no, that's not an exaggeration. Um, I started arranging songs like this when I was about 15. Now 35. And I've made songs. Yeah, I'm 35 now. And I've made songs for TV and film partly for a long time. you don't have to like absolutely pour your heart and soul into everything you have to be good but you don't have to like be the best you just have to deliver a thing that's roughly in the brief now <laughs> it's like that's the that's the aim of the game with that kind of deliverable is uh can you do it <laughs> can you do it now <laughs> So I'm landing on a major. Here we go. And a one, and a two, and a three, and a four.
uh, just noticed a little harmony error um, that I keep putting a minor fourth in there when it should be. Well, oh, thank you for saying it sounds good, but the way that I, I learned to do something like this is firstly have a vague idea in your head of where you want to go, then have a vague idea of how the sound's going to sound, then once you've got a hook, like you heard me do the bass line before and I redid the drums, uh, follow that line. So I found that in the bass line it had that tick 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 which I worked out that was a 25% shuffle. And this is all just like, I'm a bit of an audio historian nerd. Like, this is all... Like, the dry and funky kit is how you would attract it in a dry room in the 70s, that... That kind of thing. The bass is very much like a, a typical Ampeg stack with not too much high-end on the bass, very funky. And the guitars are that, and it's it's following the lines. Just just follow the lines. It'll take me a few times to get this right, and now I've got to double track it, so I want to make the guitars double right. I think in any other layers. Yeah, I think so. Actually, you know what? Now's a good time for me to pull the guitar and try something uh, on top. I want to add a wah. Let's have a look at that. My friend Billy gave me this and I want to make use of it. It's a snarling dog's addicted to wah. Now, if it works, let's give it some power. And I'll have I know Oh, it might be that I need to plug another cable into it to see it working But yeah, um, I played a lot Mustache, oh yes, thank you Um I played a lot of funky stuff when I was younger. I was a big, like, Chili Peppers fan. There we go. Sorry. Let's see, we've got Shaft. Oh, yeah. This thing's got uh, a setting called Shaft. So, am I knocking out the power there? Oh, it sounds like this thing needs a coat of locking up. Distorting like heck. Let's try the preset entitled White Room. to make sure the cables are all in nice and tight by the sound of it. Right, 
must remember, middle finger down. That is how I phrased it, so that is how it will be. Now, let's try this with the Snarling Dog's Wire. It's on the Voodoo Child setting instead of the Shaft setting. It seems to fit better. And a one, and a two, and three. I need to take this whole thing apart and give it a proper cleaning, I think. cleaning the circuit just by moving it that's it needs a whole like, can of contact cleaner in it <laughs> It's not, my head hurts. <laughs> and a one, and a two, and three, and a seven. from the A rip rise because that's where I started getting too much of the hummy buzzy stuff. Time, one more time. Sound decided to change halfway through, I guess, but uh, now for the real challenge. The real challenge is duplicate this, one on the left, one on the right, and try and record the right hand one the same as the left one, despite the fact that I literally just made this up. This is something that you do a lot as a rock guitarist is like, right, that's great, now double it. Save. Uh, let's try this. Here we go. And a one, and a two, and a three. Thank you. 
yeah, let's do it from the A reprise because I had a couple of mistakes in there, but I didn't let it bother me until now. <laughs> What's the point of doubling it? Oh, when when you do it twice and one's panned left and one's panned to the right, suddenly it makes things sound much bigger. And it means that uh, whatever possible instruments can be done that way uh, get out of the centre of the stereo image, which leads more space for things like the kick and the snare and vocals and anything else that needs to be right in the centre. It kind of It's the equivalent of the guitarist standing off to the side of the stage. But it makes things yeah, become a big stereo massive thing. Oh. Mm. Don't mind me just sucking on a cube of ice because I'm a weird person. Ah. Let's just listen back to that, see how it sounds because it could sound terrible. Who knows? Okay. Da -da 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 Right, uh, let's take record off because that should be guitar right now and listen through, see if there's anything that is particularly offensive to the ears. Well, for a start, it's way too loud. Well, this seems to be turning into a shot. I do need to re-record. Or at least see if this first take had a better clip. have the burr on the that section there yeah you can feel the wind coming off that meter needle yeah so what i'm gonna do now is pin those guitars down a little bit uh, i'm gonna get virtual mix rack on the case no i'm not first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use the slate virtual tape uh, because then if I can make this as if it was recorded on virtual tape, that will definitely knock a lot of the uh, transient off these guitars and really help them sit. <laughs> they've also just got a little bit too much in the kind of the the low mids that's the kind of thing you don't get in a textbook kids that you hear that well that's the thing oh man that really does sound reverberant uh i'm gonna take some compression off this because it sounds really echoey there we go and take the output level down and suddenly there's less compression on the vocal, which means that there's less room sound on the vocal, which was noticed by one of our viewers, Van Dien, earlier in the week. So good shout. Yeah, it seems that this mic doesn't need heavy compression. 
which is good and fine by me. So I'm going to use the custom opto compressor and see if that helps the guitars a little more. I want these to be smooth. And then I'm going to use a Neve EQ. Even though I had it in the EQs before, I'm going to use this one. And there's probably that low mid thing is too much. Right, lovely. What that means now is I can get back to playing the bass. Because what I'm going to do firstly is I'm going to re-record that bass line. Now I've got the rest of the elements in. Hopefully that will give me more of a, a, a full funk, if you will. Um, uh, let's get... Let's check the tunings quickly, uh, because that's always important. Eh? Jumping around because it's a uh, the trem bridge. This room's changing temperature because it's getting hot in here. It is the whammy bass, yes. So yes, behold the sound of the whammy bass. Uh, let's see if I can get this in one hit now. Nope, helps when you turn on the metronome so you get a count in. And one, and two. So that was terrible. Uh, I need more gain. But the ideas were in there. Uh, does the bass stay in tune after using the whammy? Yes, pretty much. The only time it does go out is when I put it down. And pick it back up and it's temperature changed because temperature change seems to affect the tuning more than normal. Hello from totally sunny South Manchester. Hiya. Good night. <laughs> I don't have many chances to do this because my fingers are going to turn to shreds. So let's try it again. And one, and a two, and a three. And...
again, the ideas are there. Um, the string, the springs in the back are actually just regular, same as guitar ones, but there are five of them locked on there. <laughs> so it's pretty much the entirety. I'm going to take the whammy arm off actually, because I'm not, I'm not using it for this funky performance. Might use it in the solo, but. Not using it in. In the main low part. And it's. And, it's, and again. Back to the B section. Stinks. Right, let's just see if that was enough. Because there was a there were a, there were a couple of parts there that I think were close enough but a little bit late, but that that's usually an editable offence. Let's just make sure that gets to the end there. Uh da -da -da. was pretty bad but there we go sounds like a new porn hub theme well it's funk <laughs> it's gonna happen needs editing because it went wrong. Hello Uruguay. Hello Juan. Yeah, that's all getting a bit rushy. Yeah, I need to chill out a little bit. There it is. that back 
too. I'm going to use a different bar. Just going to throw one in there. That's a barn. Clean that up. Now I've had the metronome on the whole time, so I'm going to listen to it without once through. And I think this is good for an extra layer and then might just stop there actually and make this nice and simple. Right, I'm going to duplicate the bass track and do something a little crazy at this point. Because I earlier heard uh, this octave thing, um, which for some reason in post was this really inspiring kind of noise. Uh, I'm definitely going to have to find a cloth from somewhere and den the strings at the bottom because this is uh yeah this is a, this this bass is ringing and my technique is kind of uh not on point shall we say but with with this on <laughs> Thank you. 
I mean, it sounds really 3D in a mad kind of way. So I'm going to take some low end out of this, push the mid range quite hard. <laughs> Let's see where this goes. This, this could go somewhere, might take another couple of takes, but it's filling in the sides quite nicely. It was never meant to, but hey, sometimes blessings in disguise and all that. Weird how that works. Let's play that back. This definitely needs a bit of EQ to massage it in there, but... Actually, hear that in between. Yeah, so you've got an OC2. Oh, I would like your OC2, but um, guaranteed your OC2 doesn't do this because pretty sure they're a mono pedal and this is just behaving weird. How 
However, the tracking seems to be working. I'm liking it. Right, you know what this needs now? Swinging this round, because what this needs now is me to gently put the bass down and not smash it against other things. Uh, but it, what it actually needs is, on the middle section, it needs an electric piano. So I want to add a new input MIDI and add in uh, Archuria. Which one is it, the Archuria? Come on, brain. What's it called? Uh, road stage seventy three. Stage seventy three is the one I want. Ooh ooh ooh, honey. Right, so that's got loads of reverb on which I do not want. Let's go with electric piano, 1973 medium amped. There we go. Uh, no, I don't think it needs a Mellotron, and I'm not good enough to play Clav because Clav really needs uh, you to be absolutely on point because it's such a transient instrument. Um, and, oh, stereo pan. the sound I want.
with the full pan 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 pan. Uh ah no, but I've already got an I've already got a war and uh, the clav honestly I'm not good enough to play clav. Not not that I'm trying to put myself down, but you need to be like proper like <laughs> Right, striked. Is an instrument you can't play? Oh, loads. Uh, I can't even play this. I'm literally just kind of bashing along as I go. Um. did I get so poor? What? Well, yeah, it, 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 this is very Stevie Wonder. This has got the kind of the superstition era feel to it. Um, but like a couple of guys in, in there, uh, a couple of guys in the chat have said, um, a clavinet, that is that Stevie Wonder sound. I don't want that exact sound. Plus, it's a very percussive thing, and I can kind of get away with comping quite a lot on an electric piano. I can kind of... And, yes. What do you mean, how did you get so poor? What could that possibly mean? That's something really annoying that this keyboard does for some reason, which is lean into it. It goes sharp and it's not after touch. I think this keyboard's been circuit bent because I bought it second hand. It does weird things, like it's got this rhythm. Let's open the piano roll. Actually, good old contact will show us what's going on with the pitch wheel. If I can see the pitch wheel. Because, yeah, that's permanently on. That's permanently off. Hmm, weird. This keyboard is strange. Um... I do have other keyboards at the studio, but they don't fit in this space. I've got an 88 note M audio that just literally will not go. Um, which is a bit of a shame. 
Um, because this is a 61 key and you would think 88 would reach, but no, the 88 is about another foot longer than I have space for there. Um, but that one I bought new, so I know that one's not got any weirdy stuff. And then I've got the Arturia Key Lab 88 Mark II, which is huge, and that will stay at the studio because of space, but yeah. Little Tom Sire reference. Anyway, let, let's try that again with a bit more sevenths and a bit less rubbish. <laughs> That's exactly the ending we need. Glue those together. Yes, yes, thank you, Al. Um, yeah, that's that's probably a good thing to explain. That this is Studio B. This is where I work from when I'm usually mixing or writing my own personal projects. Uh, studio A, the main studio, so to speak, is a little drive away from me, um, but is much bigger and has the proper resources, so to speak. Van Dien, all right. Let's have a listen to how bad this sounds. <laughs> without uh, everything else. It's already a dumb note. Okay, that's clean. I can have that. That's the only one. When you're trying to record, you're hearing lots of white noise. Um, uh, that could be anything. We need more information to go on than that. Um, it could be that you've got an interface that's really terrible. It could be that you're recording in a room that's got a lot of electromagnetic interference. It could be that you're trying to get the gain way too high it could be any any number of things 
Um, uh, view raw MIDI data. Is that what I want? Uh, no, uh, event list. Let's just take that pitch bend event away. Ah. These <laughs> are funny, but no thank you. That's the thing you can do in Reaper. You can change MIDI to be literally just... And that big stereo pan I like. So let's let's take this now down volume wise. And now to now I've got the notes where I know they're not horrible. Let's edit the timing so it sounds a bit better. First thing to do actually is just push everything back by a few milliseconds because I always rush when I play keyboard instruments. That push there was overly pushed. Pushed again. Just the first chord. So that's still way too loud, so I'm just going to turn the electric piano down now by several dB. And that should... I think we got it. I've got a funk song and I've got something I can screw around with in the next stream, which is going to be uh, screwing around with the Eventide Anthology Bundle. So let's just give this some drive and a bit of loudnessness. <laughs> the Scarlet Solo, which is one of the cheapest, most terrible interfaces in existence. Sorry to have to tell you, buddy. But it sounds to me like you need to kick that thing to the curb and get something like an Audion ID4 Mark II. Uh, and also if you can get a separate DI box if it's the guitar that you've got problems with, because I just used a separate the eye box for all of my guitars, zero problems. And I do like heavy, heavy metal stuff when I'm not doing this as well. And it's that into an ID14 Mark II is what I used because the 14's got the second channel. Uh, but if you don't need two channels, then get the ID4 Mark II. 
the specs, the specifications between the Scarlet Solo and the ID4 Mark II, it's not even funny how different they are. One is really, 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 really cheap, and one is really good for the money. But yeah, let's let's run this into Flatline now by Submission Audio just to get some volume on it. But yeah, sorry to tell you that, but I, it's kind of how it is. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is the Simple Way D1 for people with, who are asking. But there are a lot of good DI boxes out there. You don't need this particular one, but this is a really, really good example of a very, very low noise, high quality DI box. Um, there are others, but yeah. <laughs> Let's, let's play it one more time, from the top. Oh, yeah. I am happy with that. I mean, I've used Flatline quite hard and it's barely touching anything there. Um, yeah. It's barely touching anything, but um, the fatness of those drums, because that's what the stream was kind of based around. Uh, the uh, Those drums just sound ready. I mean, there's the one kit wonder. It is ready to go. And there is a multi-out option, but seeing as though this is a one-kit wonder, I didn't even want to touch it. But yeah, this was recorded and produced by Peter Miles, who is someone I now know. And yeah, Parallel and Master EQ, they don't seem to be on. So what does a DI box do? A direct injection box, there are a few different types, but it converts your guitar signal, which is a very, very, very low, very quiet signal, into a completely different type of signal that is designed to be seen by a microphone preamp. And also then that can be sent in a way that's called balanced through usually XLR outputs, uh, a really, really long way without adding any noise. I mean, the really long way thing doesn't matter if you're at home but the without any noise bit is really important because uh, the circuitry that's in here that's converting the guitar signal or whatever signal it is, whether it's keyboard, bass, whatever, into something that a mic uh, resembles a microphone, um, in even some of the best small interfaces, it, it's kind of an afterthought. It's a secondary thing. And if you start then adding things like virtual guitar amps which distort everything really really heavily because that's what they do uh they that's their job 
then suddenly all that noise flow comes up and up and up and the, the way to do it is to keep this whole part separate and away from the bit that's trying to talk to a computer in the same box. That then isolates this so it's not near any digital signals at all and then it's fed in to the interface as cleanly as possible. Uh, even the the like the the ID fourteen and even I, the ID forty four, which is audience flagship, that have really good uh, direct injection interfaces. I still won't use them. <laughs> it's kind of force of habit at this point. But yeah, yeah, it doesn't necessarily se separate electrically through a transformer, as Danny says. That is generally uh, what they are doing, uh, especially passive ones. It's usually just a big fat transformer, but a passive DI box and a passive guitar, which is most guitars, don't get on well with one another because they electrically kind of fight each other a little bit, which makes it sound a little dull. Active DI boxes uh, avoid that. This one doesn't have a transformer in, as an example. This is a transformerless DI box. It's a class A discrete direct box, but that is a very clever design and they're quite rare. I also have some valve-based, you know, tube-based DI boxes at the studio, which really add uh, an extra tone they they change the sound a bit uh which can be quite nice or it can be detrimental depending on what you're doing um yeah i generally tend to run the cleanest di boxes with the lowest noise flows that i can because i don't know what i'm going to be doing with the signal afterwards so no noise flow yes and as marty says ground lift can be very important um let's say you're playing a keyboard and the keyboard is plugged in to the ac to the mains um you then get the output from the keyboard and stick it into uh, a cable that goes all the way to the sound guy on the other side of a venue. He's plugged in with his mixer on a completely different AC, on the completely different mains, and so the ground on his and the ground on yours are connected differently, and they loop together and it goes... And so what the ground lift switch does, if you put the DI box in between completely disconnects his ground from your ground so that that just goes away. You should always make sure that everything that's plugged into AC mains is properly grounded, but you don't want two things plugged into each other using different grounds. That's where the problems begin. And so having ground lift switches really helps. Helps a lot. So yeah. That's why you should get DI boxes. Even if you don't spend lots and lots and lots of money, just get one that's halfway decent. And yeah, I, a couple of weeks ago, went to Middle Farm Studios, which is where bands like Tosca and Periphery and guys like that have recorded. And uh, they used ones from Orchid Electronics, which I also use. So... Yeah, I mean, they're not expensive. They're made in the UK, but if you're not in the UK, you might want to find another make. But yeah, does an active DI box run from the 48 volts from the mic port? Generally, yes. Generally, the 48 volts that a microphone preamp can provide is designed to power microphones, but it can also power these DI boxes that don't take very much power at all. Um... There are some DI boxes that are mains AC powered instead of 48 volts. Like I've currently got Chris's Avalon U5, which is like the mother of all DI boxes. That thing's about this big and uses AC power and is a monster. Uh, that cannot be powered through phantom power. That needs 240 volts or 110 volts AC. Uh, but generally, yes. Yeah, Marty says, rip Tosca. I don't think they'll be coming back anytime soon. Dave doesn't want to do it. Um, uh, Ben's got a family and uh, Rabi is off doing his own thing. So I don't think that's going to happen. But anyway, we're getting off track. That is the end of this stream. I'm going to export this now. And at the earliest possible convenience, we will reconvene to really mess around with this track using the Eventide Anthology plugins. Like I'm going to be getting harmonizers and going, woo, weirdy, weirdy, weird. And I'll be playing around with the Baby Audio uh, Crystalline Reverb very soon as well. So thanks, everybody. My phone's going bananas. And I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye. Hey, everyone. 
That might be the end of the video, but if you fancy carrying on this conversation, we have a Discord server. Link is in the description. We're also on Patreon, which is something you can really help us with. We also are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Hot Pole Studios. See you there.